Greetings special heads, welcome back to Automation the Car Company Tycoon game. Now somebody asked me to do some engine tutorials, which, you know, given my experience, I am more than ready to do. Um, if you guys would like, it would, I would also do some engine tutorials for earlier years. For now I'm gonna do 2015 engine tutorials, where there's, you know, all the tech available. So. Let's start at the beginning. Let's start with an inline four. And let us also start with naturally aspirated en engines because, um, <coughs> excuse me, I have a little bit of, a, um, of an itchy throat today. Um, turbo engines require a little bit more finesse and also a little bit more depth. And I'd rather have a couple of videos that are a little bit shorter and more understandable than one huge video that that goes for an hour and a half or something and explains absolutely every engine type so um since we are going for naturally aspirated in and four engines here let us first think of what kind of cars have small naturally aspirated in and four engines it's usually cheap cars or lightweight and you know, budget sports cars. <coughs> Those have naturally aspirated four cylinder engines, usually. And as such, I mean, me personally, I very much like five, five cylinder, that, but that's, you know, not common here. Let's go, instead go for four wheels per cylinder with a dual level head cam setup. You can also go with a single or head cam and four, uh, and four wheels per cylinder, but that is a little bit less efficient and also not that much cheaper so it's in my opinion just better to have dual head cams what kind of capacity i mean that is <coughs> the least of my concerns excuse me here for this engine because it doesn't really matter generally speaking if you want a a sporty engine you want your board to be higher than your stroke and if you want one that's you know more about torque, more about reliability, something that drives only to 6,000 RPM or something, then you you would rather have a lower bore and a higher stroke. We'll keep this at the square 86 by 86, two liters of capacity. And immediately we also have a quote unquote discussion to be had here about VVL, yes or no. For now, I'm gonna leave it off and i will talk about that a little bit later since this is not going to be a very expensive car that we would put this engine into we're gonna go for a cast crank and should handle the torque of a naturally aspirated four cylinder engine quite easily now for connecting rods it it depends if you're gonna be building a a budget engine first of all you might also consider going two bars per cylinder but then, obviously, if, if you're not gonna be revving this thing very high, cast conrods will definitely do. And hybrid tactic um, cast pistons for the lowest emissions possible. That would be kind of your budget engine setup uh, as far as the bottom end is concerned. Um, if, however, you want a little bit more of a sporty engine, uh, you can go for I-beam steel or also I-beam tit titanium if you want to spend that much money um, and then depending on what you want hybrid tactic cast, forged pistons or lightweight forged pistons um, let's go back to budget and trim for a second so now we're at the at the head you, uh, like at the top end Compression ratio, I mean this, the, the top end plus the fuel system tab is where you, it's basically how you define the characteristics of your engine. Generally, uh, if we're building a budget engine now, so this, I'm gonna be naming this family for, for, for now, give me a second here. Um, so this is the 2015 in 4 in 9 4 tutorial. That is an A budget. 
So this is the naturally aspirated budget engine. Obviously, you can also go for cast cast iron block material. But since we're going to build sports uh, versions of this as well, and aluminium isn't that expensive, it's it's kind of become standard these days to to use aluminium for your for your engine blocks and heads. Um, in most cases, at least, we're gonna stick with aluminium. So, for a budget engine, since we want this thing to be economical, we're gonna reduce the cam profile to somewhere between 20 and 30 is usually your best bet. The compression is gonna be around 10, I think. VVT. Now, VVT is something that also needs um, a little bit of discussion, but it is a lot less expensive than VVL so in most cases I recommend going for it and uh, this is the budget naturally aspirated version so no turbocharger for now injection now unless you're going like Dacia levels of budget uh, cars direct injection is uh, basically the norm for today's engines nobody's using multipoint you find any more except for Dacia and maybe some other like incredibly cheap brand that I'm not aware of but um, yeah direct injection is basically it doesn't even warrant a discussion here configuration single and standard because it's it's cheap and simple and definitely enough for a budget engine we're going to be running this on either regular or premium fuel. It, that doesn't really make a huge difference here. Um, fuel mixture is going to be all the way leaned out because we want this thing to be economical. Ignition timing is going to be like this. This, in conjunction with the cam profile, will make your torque curve basically. So we, I've set this to seventy for now, but we will definitely change that later probably at least rpm limit for something entry level 6000 up to 6300 6, or something is a reasonable amount i'm gonna go for 6000 for now and then um now here's the thing we're gonna go for a, a short cast header for now i, I will g get back to this after we test this engine though uh, exhaust diameter should be enough here, 146 horsepower. We don't expect to be making much more than that. High flow free wheel cat because it's basically normed these days. And I would suggest for an everyday engine, you would go either for two reverse flow or one straight through and one reverse flow muffler. 119 horsepower, so we're very low on power here. Um, wait, do we have VVL? We do not have VVL here. Um, are we running on 95 octane? That's a very weird torque curve. I've never seen that before this way. Um, so yeah, the ignition timing, as you can see, it raises our mid-range torque if we increase it. And also economy um, gets better, basically. It's always green. It's we're, we're making the engine also more efficient by increasing this. So 90 seems like a very useful torque curve. And by that I mean, basically, generally speaking, if, if your engine revs to 6,000 RPM, most people are gonna be driving it between 2,000 and 3000 rpm and maybe up to 4000 rpm and that is where you want your your uh, engine to be the most predictable you want it to be the most efficient as you can see on this graph here which is also the case um, and you can tune that with the ignition timing we have done a pretty decent job with that so far and we have made an engine that has a good bottom end torque uh, it has good bottom end torque it's got a very flat torque curve in the mid-range and then 
a, a basically flat um, top end of the of the power curve. This is basically the, one of your ideal setups for a uh, drivability instead, which is probably the most the most relevant for a budget car to be honest and we are getting 27.47 percent of economy on a naturally aspirated car which is very good actually um we are also able to increase the compression ratio a little bit because we still have a little bit of fuel obtained left over that we can use 94.9 doesn't get much closer to 95 we got 178 newton meters of torque, 123 horsepower. It's not ideal as far as horsepower per liter goes, but we got 78.2 reliability, which without quality sliders is really good. And as I said, we got a very predict predictable torque curve. This is just a very easy to drive engine, if you will. It's ideal for a budget car basically um, now what I was gonna say about um, exhaust headers if you go to tuner now material cost is lower by $13 or something weight is lower performance index is higher and uh, production units are slightly higher that overall will balance itself out it's maybe a little bit more expensive altogether because production units are a little bit are worth a little bit more than the difference here but overall if you want just a little bit more power then uh, tubular headers are definitely an option you can also see that the torque curve changed slightly we are now making more torque up in the higher rpms which for this particular engine is probably not the way to go because, as I said, most people are going to drive it between like 2,000 and 3,000, up to 3,500 RPM. And if you make most of our torque after that, then that's not very useful. Long tubular headers are still, like again, a little bit less expensive on the material cost, but a little bit more um, production units. So this will make it slightly more expensive still. I would recommend, in, in our case, the short cast headers. Now 123 horsepower is certainly not going to blow the doors off, but it is sufficient for a budget en for a budget engine of the two liter um, capacity. Obviously, you can also go for a smaller capacity and go for like 1.8 liters. this there we got 111 horsepower material cost should be overall lower and yeah this is 1.8 liter 111 horsepower good reliability good torque curve good economy for a naturally aspirated engine this is basically what you're looking for in a in a budget naturally aspirated four cylinder engine hope this uh, video helped hope you guys enjoyed leave a like or a comment if you did also if if you have any ideas on or if i did anything wrong then comment that in the comment section below um i intentionally did not speak about vvl because it's not relevant for a budget engine anyway so thank you for watching i will see you next time